Okay, so now that we've found the rules um, in the previous section, we've got a quadratic and a linear to look at, um, and we're going to use the rules. So for each of the rules above, find the seventh pattern, um, or find the number of matches needed for the seventh pattern. So in this case, we're going to be refreshing how to use the calculator to find particular values. So let's take a look at equation one this quadratic, and then we'll look at equation two, the linear. So for equation one, we are going to um, want to figure out how many matches are needed for the seventh pattern. So remember in this context, m is representing the number of matches we need, and p is representing the pattern that we're going to build. And in the table we saw that x was first, y was second, so x is p. And if I read my question, find the number of matches, so matches is what I'm looking for, when p is equal to 7. And that, in your calculator, is the same thing as x is equal to 7. So keep that in the back of our head, and this would be y is equal to something that we don't know. So, what I want you guys to do, and really get into the habit of this, is show your substitution for these problems. So you really must learn how to show, if p is equal to 7, show how you've actually used it inside of the rule. So if my rule says m is equal to 2p squared minus 3p plus 1, I'm going to show that I'm using p is equal to 7. So instead I'm going to write m is equal to 2. Instead of writing p squared, I'm going to say times 7 squared, remember, invisible time signs between a letter and a number, minus 3 times 7 plus 1. And we can put that straight into the calculator, go into our normal menu, so a menu, go into your run, and I just enter in the second part of the equation here. 2 times 7 squared minus 3 times 7 plus 1. And we get 78, so m is equal to 78 matches. So for the seventh pattern, I'll need 78 matches for this quadratic. For the linear equation, again showing my substitution, I know that I'm using p is equal to 7, so instead of writing m is equal to 3 times p plus 2, I'm going to say m is equal to 3 times 7 plus 2. Putting that into our calculator, 3 times 7 plus 2, we get 23, so m is equal to 23 matches in this case. Now. Um, another way to go about doing this, and this is a good refresher for us, is how to use xcalc and ycalc in our, cal in our calculator. So if you go to menu, we want to go into graph. You want to make sure you get to graph, and we're going to ac actually enter in the rule that we see. But remember in your calculator, we don't put in m's and p's. We're going to use that button below the red one, the x theta t button, this one here, for anything we don't know. So if I'm going to enter in my first rule, 2 times something I don't know, squared. You can actually actually just write it exactly as you see it. 2 something I don't know, squared, minus 3 times something I don't know, plus 1. You can put the time signs between, but it's okay like this. Whatever you do, don't use these ones down here. The only button you'll ever push is that one below the red one, this button here, the XOT. Hit enter and go ahead and draw your graph. Now this one's supposed to be a quadratic and I can see part of it, but remember for our um, G-solve we have to be able to see what we're looking for. So it might be good here to just zoom out to make sure we can see more of the graph. So I'm going to go um, and use G-solve in this case. So graph in your calculator to G-solve and here, we're looking for y, we don't know m, which is our y, so we're going to use y calc, because we're looking for y. So if I hit g solve, I don't see y calc here, I'm going to arrow over to see more options, and there's my y calc. Hit f1, and now it's asking me for what x value do I want to know y? And my x value in this case, like we thought about, 
was 7 because our p is 7. So I'm going to put in a 7. Hit enter. Ooh, and it's telling me argument error. Basically my calculator is saying, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. There's no answer for that. And the reason we're doing it's telling me that is because I've been silly enough not to zoom out far enough. Remember, this is the trick with G-Solve. You have to make sure that you can actually see everything you need. So if you get an argument error, press 0. It might also just exit. It might also just tell you that it's not found. Um, and we need to draw it again and zoom out further. And maybe if you're paranoid, you can zoom out again and try it. G-Solve, Y-Calc, 7. Oh, there's the answer now. So what was happening is we've got to change our window so that the calculator can see where it's looking for an answer, otherwise it's got no idea. They're not, they're not as smart as you think they are. So in this case, x is 7. I see that my y would be 78, and that's the same as I solved for already. So let's go back, exit, and put in the other rule. Little trick for you here. You can enter in more than one rule at once. So I can say 3x plus 2 for my linear, 3p plus 2. Press enter. And those little boxes next to each of those rules, if I hit select F1, it turns one of them off. So now I'm only going to have one, um, one graph in here. And you can see I'm only going to graph my linear one here. So same process, looking for uh, y when x is equal to 7. So g solve, arrow over, y calc, 7, and I see 23, which is exactly what I had before. So remember, you need to make sure you're zooming appropriately to get G-Solve to work, and you can also use the big brown gray arrow button to move around a little bit too, um, as well as the zoom, or the window button, this one here, to change what values you're actually looking through. Okay, so don't forget that with the um, Y-Calc that's available to you.